What were we talking about last time? Fish. Fish. Mm -hmm. What about them? That they might be contaminated. Oh, yes. The smelts. The smelts. The contaminated smelts in Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. Among other contaminated fish in Lake Superior. Okay, so. There is a way for all of us who enjoy fishing and keeping the fish that we catch and eating them to understand what is in those fish. It's available for everyone. It's called the Ontario Guide to Eating Fish. So we're gonna dig a little bit into that today and we'll see where we go. Yeah. I wanted to start off again by saying that I am not an expert in this subject area. I am just here to provide a different perspective. That of a biologist. Yes. Uh, as perspective of someone who likes to angle, likes to fish, but also is a biologist that works mainly on freshwater fish. Yes. There were questions uh, that came about from the last video, just wondering where this information is available. Right. And what is available to people, because it's you don't really hear much talk about it unless there's a big scare or something like that in the news. Right. So all this information is constantly available. It's always available and it's made available by the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Fisheries. They have a website, which I think we're going to go on today just to give a quick example. Yeah, we'll have of, a look at it. Of how to search for fish possibly in any area that you're wanting to fish in just to see are there any um, potential contaminants in those fish species? Yeah, in the fish that you intend to target and probably intend to eat. Yeah, so none of the information we talked about last time was like secret information. No. It's everything that's already out there. We didn't bring up anything new. We were just trying to point out that this stuff exists. And it's not only mercury. Yes. That is out there. There's lots of different contaminants that you could possibly have in your fish. And not only fish. Like... All these contaminants could be really in any of the foods that we eat, but this is a, you know, a video about fish. Yeah. So that's what we're sticking to here. Yeah. So there's a couple websites the, that the MNR provides to help you out with fishing. One of them, as we mentioned, is the Ontario Guide to Eating Fish. The other is Fish Online. And a lot of folks are probably familiar with the Fish Online website. I'll bring it up so we can have a look. And... If you're not familiar with this, this gives you a database of lakes and rivers that have been surveyed at some point in time. It's not all brand new data that's here, but at some point in time to tell you what species of fish have been found in there. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you kind of go. Okay. So let's we'll just pick. say that we're in our area. And we want to look at... That's Carp Lake. That's a good one to look at. Let's look at that's, Carp Lake. Yeah. So then you would click on... Carp Lake. Carp Lake. Okay, so we got information that shows... So it tells you how big it is. So the surface area. So that's just how... What the... <laughs> okay, so let's... Why don't we look at fish? Let's okay. click so on the Okay, this tells fish. you lake information. And it also tells you regulations for that water body. And then it tells you... Hold on, go back to regulations for okay. a second. So there is a link to the Fisheries Management Zone 10 and Ontario.ca slash fishing right in here. And so, okay, so let's look yep. at fish. And then it'll tell you what fish species have been caught in there and when they were observed. So we have burbot, also known as ling, um, northern pike, yellow perch, and, and now I think, so these are the species reported by the public, unconfirmed, are, are what we're looking at here. Okay, the, the one that is up above, that is what has been noted or, or observed by the MNR. MNRF. MNRF in, the, in this particular lake. And, yes. and the same, you can see at the, bold, at the top in bold, it says MNRF species observed. And then if you go down to the next section, public species reported. So one is recently as uh, January... 2021. Or January 20th, 2021. Yes. And the Northern Pike as well, and Yellow Perch was in 2016. Yeah. So, but the interesting thing is that 
doesn't say anything about when the last observation date was from the MNR. No, it might it might be. It could be from the seventies. Yes. Could be earlier. Could a lot be of later. times it has more information there about that, and it also tells you if there's any anything that has ever been stocked in that water body. And so nothing nothing available there. And then you can fill out a survey about if you were to go there and catch something, you can let them know what you caught there. But this is a cool thing that you can fill out anonymously, basically, and just, you know, it, it helps out with biologists that are researching these water bodies because it's your input going to them, your, bo your boots on the ground mm -hmm. in these areas here, essentially. Okay, so, Fish Online. We know what Fish Online is now. Okay, so there's that website. So that's a good one if you want to go out fishing to see what fish might be in your water body. Yeah, if you're researching, you know, where where you want to go fishing. Maybe you're planning a few days out fishing, camping, yeah. crown land, something like that. You can use this to sort of plan out your fishing days. Figure out what's there, what regulations exist. Yeah. And then if you want to know about uh, contaminations that have been found, you would go to a different website. And that's called... Map Guide to Eating Ontario Fish. It also has a map here. So let's just... So all these things, all of these websites will link to in the description of this video so that you can find them. Yeah, so let's just scroll down to the same area. That's not the same area. No. Okay, here we are. So we scrolled into the same area and it looks like... There's been no fish with uh, contamination uh, tested in yeah. that lake. Doesn't that's necessarily that's mean not that... to say that there are no contaminated fish in the lake. That lake just does not have information on this website. Yeah, it might mean that though. It just means that no tested fish have, have it in that yeah. lake. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Pancake River instead. And then you click on consumption advisory table and that'll take you to a different tab. And so for Pancake River, um, in that river, there is rainbow trout that has a consumption advisory. These are the lengths and in inches and, and in centimeters that you have advisories for. Um, and then there's the general population as well as sensitive population, which are women of childbearing age and children under 15. And so just something to note as well that because it only says rainbow trout doesn't mean that only rainbow trout are potentially contaminated or not contaminated in this water body. It just means that is what they have data for. They have data for out of this water body. Yes. And then if you look at the end of the name of the species, there's a superscript here. And it says here, that's the number identifies the contaminant or group of contaminants which are causing consumption restrictions. So to do that, you need to go to a page called Eating Ontario Fish. And we'll also link to this page in the description. This is where it starts to get confusing, folks. Well, it's not that confusing. It, it's not that confusing. You, know you, those... you are a biologist. And <laughs> so clicking around and digging for information... Yeah. It's kind of more in your... It would be nice if you could just click on that superscript or somewhere on that page and it shows directly goes to this. Yeah. But if you want to know what it is, sorry, if you want to know what it is, it's just here's a, a table of contents and just go to contaminants and fish. And then so number three is dioxin-like PCBs. So it's a select group of PCBs with harmful properties similar to dioxins. Okay, now hold on a second. Let's just... Step back a second here. Contaminants in fish is what we've got at the top mm -hmm. of the list here. Why don't we just, I'm sorry to like totally get off topic here. Yeah. But what do we have here? What's this list? How big is it? So it goes up to six on what I can see. Does it go further? Yes. Yeah, so here's that list we were talking about last time. I mentioned that there are about 15 of them. So mercury is number one. Then we have PCBs in different forms. Dioxins. Oh, I went down too far. Oh, no, I didn't. I'm getting used to his mouse here. So then there's the toxophene. So yeah. that's number five. Not number five in, like, rank. No, just Just in number list. five in the list. And when you're looking for information in the fish that you're eating, that little number beside the fish 
is attached to this list. Yeah, and then there's PFAs, selenium, arsenic, uh, polybrominated PBDEs, there's a bunch of different ones, uh, coronium, and then the last one here is cadmium. And there's lead, murex, photomurex, chromium. And then it says, for more information, you can contact the Fish Contaminant Monitoring Program. So there's their phone number there. Mm -hmm. There's their email address. You can email them. So if you're concerned about any of those chemicals or contaminants and you want to know more, you can just email them or call them. Okay, let's zip back now to okay. Rainbow Trout in the Pancake River, the fish that we were looking into. Where are we? There we are. Okay, so Rainbow Trout. Yeah. The little number attached to Rainbow Trout is three. So we go to the map. The map? Yep. Okay. Oh, no, not the map. We go to the list. So that's here. So you can open that link in a new tab. See, there it is. Yep. So it's on that web page. You don't have to search somewhere else for it. It's and, there. But then you have to go all. So why isn't that little number three? A link. A link. That'd be good. Yeah, that would be. Wow. And then you can go to Tamets and Fish, and then you can see. Even if that thing, even if that little number three was only a link to that whole list. Yeah. That would be handy. So now we've seen where fish might be in terms of if you want to go fishing, what the regulations are for that area, how to find out if there's contaminants known in any of the fish species in that area, and what how to find out what contaminants um, they are. Yeah. Um, why don't we, just for the sake of curiosity, why don't we open up the Gooley Bay Smelt Map Guide to Eating Ontario Fish. Okay. So, and so that then we can get actually maybe some sort of a geographic representation of what this Gooley Bay area Yeah, is. so it's not Gooley, so it says Gooley Bay area. So it's from south of Batchewana Bay to the St. Mary's River. Okay, so, so it's this whole let's area. Close that, let's close the that thing for a sec. So basically the bottom tip of Batchewana Bay there, all the way down to the St. Mary's River. So the, all on the Canadian side. And probably all on the American side, but... This is the Canadian advisory. That's right. And so... Yep, yeah, and then we would go to the consumption advisory table. And we have more fish species. Bigger lake makes sense. Yeah. So why don't go so quickly? We can go like I mean we can start at the top here. We'll just list the okay. So these we'll are all the in uh, alphabetical order based on the species name, the common so, name. So we have burbot. So we have burbot, and that's number one. And then we have chinook salmon. It has one and two. Cisco or lake herring has two, and these are all the numbers that that should link to the explaining what the contaminant is. That would be nice. So, so coho salmon, lake trout. Lake whitefish. And so it goes on. Let's get, down to smelt. Let's get down to right, smelt. Let's get down to smelt. Rainbow smelt, one we're talking about. So that's where it says zero for length 15 to 20. That's about all the sizes you'll see. It's yeah. usually smaller. Um, that just, it doesn't, list doesn't start that small. But even if you compare the smelt, so this is the thing. If you compare smelt right in here, and so zero and zero. Now let's go. Let's go back up. What's the one up just above? The one just above is Northern, Northern Pike. Pike. So we still, it's still you sixteen know, meals a month, eight meals a month, for general population versus sensitive. Yeah, almost the whole size range. Yeah. So, anyways, so that is just that's looking at a more familiar thing based on discussions over the last little while. Yeah. So then there's also a cool table on the eating um, Ontario fish where it shows you how to convert um, your the meal portion size to how much of a fish. Because it's going to change by fish because a smelt, one smelt is less than one meal. Yeah. So the following table can be used to convert one fish meal into approximate equivalent number of fish fillet. Oh, fillet. Okay, yeah. So, so. Not, so it'd be half of the fillet for Atlantic salmon. Um, if it's 20 inches long. So it kind of gives you an idea that one, f a meal isn't a filet 
Or it isn't a fish. No, it's like a portion. It is a portion re size. Recognized size yeah. in, in, the, in the industry that creates our guidelines. Right. Industry. And so it's, it's 227 grams or 8 ounces. So this is just a rough guide based on the size of the fish. The size of the fillet based on the length of the fish. Yeah. So it's great that there's all of these websites out there to help us out. Mm -hmm. Not only finding fish, but finding out what we should eat or how much of these fish that we should eat. But let's go back. You feel comfortable eating. Yeah, that you should feel comfortable eating. And I mean, these are guidelines, right? It's not like it's being forced upon you that this is... Don't eat more. Well, that is kind of what it's saying. But anyways. <laughs> it's saying you should probably not feel comfortable eating any smelt out of the Gooley Bay area. Yeah. Or X number of meals per month of X fish in said area that you're going to. Okay. Let's go back to uh, the Fish Online website for a second. Do you right. Want to, can you pull that up again? Yeah. Okay. So once we're back on the fish online website where you can go around and you can discover what you want to fish for somewhere. And I mean, there's a lot of data here to look at. Like if you zoom out, I mean, look at all this, all of these places. So we'll zoom in. Let's just, let's pick something here. Uh, you maybe want to mention what those red those are fish sanctuaries and special regulation areas and things like that. That has nothing to do with eating fish or anything like that. Well, you can't, if you can't fish for them, you can't eat them. Well, that's true. Yes. So what do we got here? We got Lake Superior here. And over in here, so we see in the fish list, we have all these fish listed. And let's just for the sake of this particular video or this discussion, let's pick rainbow smelt. Okay. So rainbow smelt are present in Lake Superior. So we can go fishing in Lake Superior for rainbow smelt. Mm -hmm. And when we were on the other map, the map to eating Ontario fish, yep. we can see that that is essentially in the same location and it's just, it's marking Lake Superior. Now, where was that other thing? Fish online. There we go. But when we go to this water body, do we have anywhere in these this list of links here anything about eating the fish? No. Nothing here. And this probably goes for everywhere. There's probably not really, so we have nothing listed in the additional information about any, anything even pertaining to the, a link to the guidelines for eating these fish. Haviland Creek. What are the fish? Brook trout, coho salmon, rainbow trout, water body. No information, regulations. We have Ontario.ca slash fishing, fisheries management zone 10. That's all that we see here. Now, I personally think it would be a really good idea to have a link to the guidelines to eating the fish on the Fish Online website. With all these links available, why isn't that there? It, this makes no sense to me. It's the same government. It's the OMNRF. Puts all of this stuff together. There's no reason for this stuff not to be linked. Well, there's a phone number and a web an email address that you can contact. Yeah, I, I know, to. but let's be realistic. People don't... Most. No, I mean, you can message them and ask them to put a link on that. Yes, and I think even to get through to anyone there that would actually be able to have take, tried to, or to take that idea into consideration, like, and put it to work 
would be impossible. Oh, I don't I don't agree with that. Well, I will try. I think you should try. I will try. I think you should. I will try. Yeah. I don't think I will be the first one who has tried to do that though. Now, I mean, I'm sure there are some reasons why it's so hard to decipher all of this information. There has to be. Otherwise, it's it's all right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not. It's just you got to jump through hoops to get here, 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 and there, and it, it it's not easy to consume for the average angler. Yeah, it would be good if they combined them. Yeah, and yeah. even made it easier to to understand how to get a hold of this information. Like it'd be great if you only had one web page to go to, and everything you needed to know was there. Yeah. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to go to another page to see what the superscript meant, go to another page to see what fish is in a water body, and then then another one to see what if any of them are contaminated, what size. 